What's good? It's Kevin Cannon, publisher of Making a Magazine, founder of the membership. Um, and we're back uh, once again, yes. joined by Primrose and the wayward artist that she's brought in off the streets. <laughs> like, like this is—is is this gonna be a recurring thing? Hey, wayward, L- wayward artist, wayward? like just dragging in somebody <laughs> from the outside, basically. <laughs> wayward artist. <laughs> like I just be finding people, just. <laughs> but. No. I mean, actually, you know, I feel like it's a really great dynamic having a third person on and, you know, they have a completely different perspective. Because, like, last week, me and you were kind of in the same boat, but the other person was completely not until, you know, we started to explain some things. So this week is going to be interesting with we got Vigilante here with us. Yes, yes. Say what's up. What's going on, everybody? What's up with it? Tell who you are. Okay. Well, I'm Vigilante, a mogul, philanthropist, public figure. Um, go by where Mark is still in the acting world, a uh, celebrity boxer. Damn, if I start naming this shit, we'll be here until next week. So just vigilante. <laughs> vigilante, y'all. He does it all. Master of uh, what? Master of all trades? I'm Jack maybe, of all trades. Yeah, I maybe remember the money is at. But if they paying, I'm going. Master That's where it's at. There you go. Yeah. Where the money goes. Man, that, that, could, that could be a topic. <laughs> that could be the topic. Like, after you get past your third hyphen it. I throw all that shit out the window. Uh, like, it was like rap, I sing, I produce, I DJ, I manage, I direct. pressure wash, I cook, <laughs> right. I got plates on Saturdays. Right. <laughs> like, nigga, you just, you trying to pay your rent. So, <laughs> I'm not the pressure that's washing. It. That there might be go. hard. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, yeah. that, that's that thing, like, in Atlanta, like, when you're in the entertainment industry, mm-hmm. it's like, you know what the crazy thing is, though? Everybody do a list of things or have a list of Job titles, mm-hmm. a list of job titles, but no job. Say that. Like, niggas will throw 80 job titles and run away from a job. Yeah. Like, I do this, oh I do this, God. I do this, I do this. Why what? I saw a meme on that just yesterday. <laughs> somebody posted, I think DJ Big X and Jermaine Dupri posted. They was like, Atlanta's the only place that you can come to, and everybody does something in the music entertainment industry, but has no job. Yeah. yeah. Zero jobs. Sound how, right. how do you make your money? Um, eBay gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then all access Jay was like, um, right, the 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 job that everybody was forgetting was to say professional scammer because right. that's actually a oh, job man. in Atlanta. You yeah. can be a professional scammer and make it lucrative money, y'all. It's crazy. So tell us about it, Vigilante. About what? Professional scamming. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> But I do want to give a shout out to my guy Jay. Shout out to my guy K100. Hey. All right. So, um, so what's the topic? Because I think that that could be a topic. We might put that one in the tuck for another time. Yeah, yeah. So um, the topic today is really uh, where does the money go? So we're talking about budgeting, budgeting for the new aspiring or even professional artists. Like, how does that work? Where does the money go? What what is budgeting really? Right. Vigilante, what's your budget? When it comes to the marketing for the music? Yeah, for your music. What's your budget? So he just okay. said marketing. All right. Well, I'm going to start from the beginning then. Um, when I was a new artist, and I'm pretty sure every new artist has this same thing when it comes into the game that they're just trying to they're just trying to get it heard. The money is, they're not spending it the right way, and they're not spending enough of what they're supposed to be spending. So let's say that they're supposed to be getting merch. They don't know what merch is. They don't really know how to sell it, but they're trying to sell an image. So they go and they buy like Gucci, Louis, and Prada that they can't afford. Mm-hmm. And then they spend their budget on that. And then they go and they do an open mic with designer on. And that is counterproductive to the entire thing that they're trying to do because now they don't have any flyers. They don't have a banner. They don't have a poster. They don't have a actual professionally shot music video. That YouTube is not monetized, so when they do shoot the music video, they're not having no money come back from it. They don't know what Vivo is. They don't know how to get on Vivo. They don't know how to register their music with BMI or ASCAP. They don't. You want me to keep going? <laughs> yeah, but answer the question. What's no, Vigilante, I'm, what's I'm, your I'm, budget? I'm answering the question right <laughs> You're now. You're not. Yes, and I this am. is the problem with artists. No, that is a fucking problem, math though. question. <laughs> that, I'm, ask, I'm answering ask, the question. If I ask how tall you are, you're going to give me numbers, right? Five, three. Right. If, if I ask how much you weigh, what you want, what's your age? Math. math. Like numbers. <laughs> right? Okay. Numbers. That's the way that but you learn. This is a, when That's the, not everybody's learning. Right, no, method. no. Here's the thing. That's yours. The budget is a number. That's all it is. No, it ain't. It it's, is. It's a, it's a lot of other intangibles that goes in. With no, it's that. not. Yes, it is. It's, 
Explain. I just was before you interrupted me. You talked about YouTube monetization. You talked about so many things. You talked about Gucci, Louis Louis Prada. You talked about open mics. You Mm -hmm. talked about everything. Mm -hmm. You gave me it like it was like an essay question. Mm -hmm. And the the you the answer was for an essay question, but the the actual question was, what is five plus? I thought it wasn't no answer. So it went from no answer to an essay answer. You gotta pick one. (laughs) Well, if you give the wrong formatted answer, ain't no wrong. <laughs> this, is, this is a subjective question, so I get your budget? my answer. Hmm? What's your budget? Mine? Oh, now we're gonna go back to that. I see your. I learning. never left it. I see your learning style. It's interesting. <laughs> I like this dude, man. He at Alpha Alpha Sigma. You're gonna see a lot of that during this interview, um, or whatever we want to call it. So, my budget is an open budget. I don't have a limit to how much I can spend on it. Okay. I don't like I don't like telling people that I'm I can get you everything that you want. Mm-hmm. Everything that you want to make happen, everything that you desire, your wildest dreams and Grammys is going to cost you 7.3 million dollars. Let's run it. Okay. But why would I give you the 7.3? No, no, I'm this is a hypothetical. Oh. I, and listen, it's proven. I got all the documentation, everything, all everything that you need to get you over the hump to believe it is there. The price tag is seven point three million dollars. Okay, can so, you do that? Are you can saying, you do that? I'm asking you. Do you believe that well, I have? Can you buy that? What's the I, What's the I'm goal? For, you. <laughs> insert that clip right here. <laughs> I'm asking you. Do you believe I have seven point three million dollars? No, you said your budget was unlimited. It it's was unlimited, it, yeah, yeah. So seven point three million dollars. Okay, so I'm asking you. Do you believe that I have seven point? That has now, nothing. You avoided my question, and you feel like I'm avoiding yours. I see what you're doing. No, so no. on me. <laughs> no, it don't work. <laughs> All right, so here's the reason why I, I show you this, right? Mm-hmm. Is because this is the problem. Mm-hmm. You need a budget. Right. And artists don't have budgets most of the times because they're not. They haven't seriously thought about whatever it is that they want. Like having a budget, it, the answer is like it's a, it's a math problem. Like at the end of the day, you can, uh, I could propose a problem, Right. And but the way that you find a solution, you got to show your work, you got to work through it and you're going to come to a number like it's going to take X amount of dollars. And so in order for you to have a budget and this is the way I define the budget is what you're willing to give up. For what you expect to get out of it. And that's it. And so you budget your time. You budget your money. You budget many different things. But in order for you to, to, to come up with that, that, that number, you have to honestly set a goal and say, hey, this is what I want to get accomplished. And so anything that you're serious about in life, you have a budget for it. Y'all going out to eat after this, right? Right. You know whether you're going to roof Chris or Wendy's. Like yeah, you, about that. you, you have an understanding of how much you're willing to spend. If you're going out to an event, you're going out to party, you're going to for the holidays. Mm-hmm. Every person on your list that you had to buy something for in your head was, a, I'm not going over this much. Right. <laughs> it's like I don't never do that, man. But I get what you're saying, though. You, you so I don't do that. You don't do that when you go out to eat. No. When you buy a house, when you buy a car. No. It's just like whatever. It's whatever. Okay. Yeah. I want to be like. I you. live a pretty good life. You there? Have an infinite amount of money. Yeah, mm-hmm. infinite. Like. I don't care how much money you got. Even Elon has a decimal point somewhere in his account. Like, <laughs> why, <laughs> all why? resources are finite. You want to ask him? All resources are finite. I just asked you, do you want to ask him? Do I want to ask Elon? Yes, the person that you just mentioned. Elon do Musk. you want to ask him? I don't need to ask him. Uh, so you're going to speak on him, but don't want to ask him? No, I said, I don't need all resources are finite. I'm go to the next. See, he's yeah. super artist. He's a super artist. Super. You live in an ethereal plane. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? It's like everything, like there there has to be tangibles. Because here's the thing is, and this is the this is the thing when it comes to with the business side of uh, the thing as creatives, you have the ability to create. Mm-hmm. You have the ability to take those wild ideas, whether it's um, a visual, whether it's a beat, whether it's a song. And something that never existed in the world manifested into a tangible thing that people can hear, see, experience exactly how you envisioned it. Mm-hmm. Because you understand the science of art. Mm-hmm. 
Like when you learn that program, how to make beats, when you learn how to control your vocal, when you develop your skill as a writer, you're able to take those ideas because you've learned the science, mm -hmm. but you think that art isn't a science, but it's a science it of is. art. Yep. And you learn to translate that. And so with that power, a lot of times artists think that they can do the same thing in the world of business. They think that, I think this is how it should play out. And I'm just gonna manifest it playing out that way without understanding the science of business. And that's where we get a lot of frustrated artists. Like when we ask artists like, hey, what's your budget? And I hear this all the time from artists, is like, that's that's a red flag. Oh, everybody wanna know what my budget is. Like, yeah, how is someone supposed to help you? Yeah. Like every like if if someone wants you to come to the studio for a feature, if someone wants you to come out of town for a show, like you understand that there are gonna be costs that you incur. You need to know what the budget That's is nice. to determine whether it even makes sense for you to participate in these things. And so we always wanna know what the budget is for other people. But when people wanna know what the budget is for us, suddenly budget becomes a bad word. So, and I think that budget becomes a bad word because a lot of artists don't even know what should go into the budget. So that's the question. What should be included when you're budgeting? And I think that's the, the it's backwards. Mm. Like, you don't, the typical person budgets based on what they have. Mm. Okay. Like, you know you got a job, and when you move down to Atlanta, you figure out, you're looking for play, where, somewhere to stay. So yeah. you're looking at, you know what price range. Well, let me look in this area. Let me look over here. You you don't just look for a place. That is a lovely home. Who don't All do right, that? Now let me figure out how to make that amount of money. Who don't do that? 99% of the population. You ain't never just drove around and was like, I like that house. Let me go get it. You ain't never did that before? No. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. I'm listening. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, hello, viewers. Have you ever done that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have y'all ever done that before? <laughs> yeah. When I, when, I went so, to go, when I went to go get so, my car, that's like, what I did when I went to the dealership. I said, that's a nice one right there. Yeah. I want to hear the rest of what you're saying, though. No, it's like, and that's that's the that's the thing is um, the the average person who... Okay, that's who we speaking to. I thought we was talking to everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everybody is. Yeah. Who said that? That's the definition of yeah, the so average. You the <laughs> when you take everyone, right, and you it's math. create an average. Oh, he hates math. He hates math. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with math. Yeah, I don't have a problem with math. That's what the average is, though. That is the middle. Okay, it's it's, taken, it's saying, taking man. everyone into account. I, I so we speak I, to the average. But I didn't know that we was like, okay, so you got the middle, you got the far, like, poverty over here and then you have the rich over here mm -hmm. i didn't know that we was like directing the conversation directly to just always like directed to the average oh, i'll never do that no yeah. okay mm -hmm. i get what you're saying though yeah. But yeah you do above average i do everybody i talk for it like the synopsis i gave earlier was for everybody but that's the that's malpractice and that's why i, I like when we talked when i mentioned russ and mentioned mm -hmm. certain people mm -hmm. is shout out to it, russ. it's like if um if you go to the doctor and they write you a prescription, mm -hmm. but they don't ask any of your symptoms, they don't check your chart, your family history or nothing, like, yeah, it could, it could very well be exactly what you need. It could also very well kill you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's kind of the thing with a lot of the advice that we give out or that it's given out um, isn't contextualized. Mm -hmm. So it isn't putting, like, hey, this is for this type of person. This is for these type of people. And so, like, that's why I say, like, even when I'm asking you these questions and you give an example, um, you're speaking from a place of affluence. And the reality of it is, if you're pursuing a career in the music industry, you're probably not living an affluent lifestyle. Right. Like, and what that's... Mean, what you mean by affluent? Like, on the schedule? Like, just money-wise, having and lots of money. like the average person is not... Well, if they're pursuing their, yeah. okay, I see what you're right. saying. Okay, like, yeah, I'm like, catching you. I got yeah. you. So it's like, so when we talk about artists, like the, the, the and this kind of goes into what we had talked about previously is the music industry, why I feel like so many people gravitate toward the music industry, especially people of color, um, like music and sports entertainment, period. It's a, it's a, a highly scalable 
area mm -hmm. with low startup capital needs. I can it's feel just that. you. Okay, I can feel that. So you, if you learn to dribble this ball amazingly and dunk it, if you learn to throw this ball, if you learn to run this route, if you learn to rap, sing, you can, like that costs so nothing but your right. time and your mm -hmm. effort and how much you can put in, and you could scale that to be a millionaire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to have access to things that you can never have access to. Um, that doesn't require as much startup capital right. as um, doing a Tesla. You feel me? Or like it, it, it doesn't require. And, and here's the thing. We also praise it at the same time. So we'll praise you at the bottom of the list, like because you're dope at high school basketball, because mm -hmm. you're dope in college, because you'll, you'll, you'll still get the adulation of our community all the way up. Like when you start a business, like you don't get no adulation None. when you start your business. <laughs> like, oh, you doing your little, your little okay, business. that's cute. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, so so it's like so I when can't. it comes to this, like the that's, music. That's how that's how y'all businesses started. Yeah, that's how. Well, I I really I don't even know how my business started, like because I was doing music and I was making money doing music. Okay, I, you I know I want to hear about that. Oh, yeah, you gotta have to. They say, listen. You want like that old hoes, you got to buy my old albums. Okay. So check the last podcast. Right. That's what I'm going to say. We're going to do this already, so check the last podcast. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do my yeah. homework because I do want to know. Yeah. Okay. But now, nah, like, I can even say when when I started doing music, um, a lot of my family members was like, uh, you know, go back to school. Yeah. They weren't really buying into it. They are like, okay, that's nice. You could do that, mm -hmm. but what you really doing, you know? So, yeah, no, nah, it's not always. Because you weren't really doing out. it, though. Like, let's be honest. Did you have a budget when you stopped going to school and you, like, did you have a goal, a budget, and a plan? No. Mm -mm. So you weren't really doing it. Mm -mm. You just, you you dropped out of school with a dream, and that's the thing, like, mm -hmm. all these people want to, yeah, just, that is the worst advice. Because I thought that that was how it worked. Remember, because that's what they told you. Exactly. That's what they tell you. About that. I thought that was how it worked. It did not work like that, guys. Right. <laughs> Don't drop out of school to just jump into it. I mean, it worked for me. I can say it's been working for me. I'm not struggling. It, 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 it hasn't. Uh, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't at first. That didn't work. Right. That didn't work. You're See, right. that's the thing. You're right. No, you're that right. did not work. That that's why you're doing work. something else. <laughs> that did not work until I started, you know, Indy Fresh and was like, oh, this is business. It forces you to right. look at budget because now you got, yep. you have hard costs. And this goes back to what I was saying. Like, as creatives, you're looking for ways to not spend money as mm -hmm. if that makes you money. So I'm going to do my own cover art. I'm going to record myself. But when you are doing an event, then it's like, well, I can't do security and I can't DJ can't and I can't, everything. I don't have a venue. Like, mm -hmm. so you have to spend this mm -hmm. money. But then when but you have to, there you go. <laughs> it, it forces you to do business mm -hmm. and and Being an that. artist doesn't force you to do business. Nope. But see, from doing that, that's what taught me that in my artistry, my brand still needs a budget too. I was yeah. like, dang, I need a budget for this and this and marketing and these people and folks is working for me now. Like, got to figure it out. So, yeah, budget. So what goes into the budget? It's two ways. The budget is one of two things. Is what you can afford to spend mm -hmm. for the desired outcome. Um, or what you're willing to spend for the desired outcome. What you can afford to spend or what you're willing to spend. The average person, it's going to be what they can afford to spend. Mm -hmm. Outliers, it's going to be what they're willing to spend. Outlier. So I'm an outlier? Yeah, what you're willing to spend. Here's, the, here's, the, here's typically, we'll get that answer. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes, all right, it's going to be 78000 to start this radio campaign. Oh, it's like, all right, so you can't afford that. So let's be honest let's be about life. what can you actually afford. And then for other people, they may have, like, let's say an investor, someone who has millions of dollars and can, and can easily drop 500000 on your project. Mm -hmm. But they're going to start it off with, like, 25000 50000 Right, small chunks. And that's what they're, they're willing to spend. And then what, what happens is, and I watch people run through their investors and run through opportunities like this all the time, they spend that money as if they already have access to the 500000 mm. mm. So they spend that 25000 and 50000 on some, some complete, utter nonsense that may have made sense in the bigger scope of things if you had a $500,000 budget, but you, you spent 
25000 on this one play, this one thing that offered no return on investment yeah. to made it, make it a comfortable situation for, for your investor. Exactly. So That's it's really. it's those two things. It's what one is willing to spend for a desired outcome or what someone can afford to spend for a desired outcome. That's what the budget is. It's an equation. Mm -hmm. And so you have to define what your desired outcome is. And so, like, and that's the thing where um, most artists don't have goals. Yeah. Like, like tangible, short, like, not dreams. Right. Like, man, I want to win Grammys. I want to change the world. And, like, I ask artists all the time when I used to do more consulting work. So what what you want to do here? What do we do? Man, I just want to change the world and da-da-da-da. I'm like, all right, you've been talking for 10 minutes, and you ain't said nothing about no money. <laughs> Let me make sure he paid this invoice. <laughs> 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 like, like, we're on two different pages. Yeah. And so it's like. Speaking from his creator side. Yeah, but that, listen, we we in a business meeting. Yeah. You do that creative stuff in the studio. Okay. Not at my conference that. table. No, I can <laughs> see that. So what do you normally say after that when they say that? I say this. Like, what are you doing? Like, like I'm not, you know you're paying me, right? <laughs> like, like, so. My, because my goal is people pay me, and I, I have no, I make no qualms about demanding my money, because my goal is to help you make money. But if you ain't mentally focused on making money, then I know now I can't help I, you. Now I can hear why you coming from that perspective. Now yeah. I hear why, for sure. Yeah, I hear it. It's like, and that's that's the thing is like, <clears throat> my my desire is to help people get to a check, mm -hmm. and so that can't happen. It's like. If um, and I, the analogy I always use is, um, you have Apple Maps, you have Google Maps, whatever. You have to put in a destination, mm -hmm. and it's like, and, and that destination, you say, y'all want to go get something to eat? Let's say you, you must McDonald's. Be you want me to? No, I'm just throwing this out there. You say, okay. yo, if you say, hey Siri, route me to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's like, it'll route you to McDonald's. But it's gonna need, hey, which McDonald's? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, see that, like the va the goals be so vague. I want to make money doing music. Like, how much money? Like, that you want to make that $10? is a bit, that is a bit specific, especially for a new artist, especially when they're coming at it from strictly an, an art standpoint. I'm I'm looking back. I'm 28 now, so I'm looking back at my 15. Oh, that's why my 15 okay, year old self. <laughs> What's wrong with me being 28? Nothing. Ain't nothing wrong. I wish. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm looking back at my 15-year-old self, and I wouldn't even have been able to answer those questions right. even if I had a tangible answer for them. But I did at 17, and I made money. I, 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 and I, I feel that that was a totally, totally different. But this is for the average person who probably is not thinking about, you the, know, the, the money the part. The budget. Yeah. <laughs> I, most, Here's the thing. Most are not. We're not honest. And that's my problem is being honest. Like we lie to each other. That's what the that's what Instagram is. Mm -hmm. That's what all this social media. That ain't it's like you. it's just a bunch of lies. And nobody yes. telling the truth about nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's an ego stroke. I feel like it's it's listen. Ain't nobody ever stroke. told one truth on Instagram. Ever. When's the last time you seen someone post their bills? Mm, all right then. Never. That's, that's too personal. Your, no, no. Your, your bills so so is your checks. Your bills. If you can't post, if you can't post your deposits. They, you want to you want to okay. post your deposit? It's not lies. People post highlight reels. That's two right, different and things. That's a lie. No, no, it's not. When you look at a basket, a lie by when, you omission. At, when you look at ESPN, a lie by they omission. give you the synopsis of the most interesting stuff that happened during the game, and they also give you the score. Yeah, that's the it's a score. And the Wizards lost. <laughs> like, I don't care. And the other I don't care won. what they did. And the like, it could have been won. the most amazing, spectacular play, whatever. But at the end of the day, they're gonna give you the score. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna give you the score. And like, and it comes down to these numbers. Yeah, man, you a real numbers guy. I see yes. that. I understand. And and that's the thing. Like, and that's why that's why so many artists don't make the numbers. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're not. Yeah. They're not. Mm -hmm. And so it's so, so, I hear I hear what you're saying. So when we going I back to you. the the budget and the GPS, right? Mm -hmm. You got to be more specific with your with your goals. Your goals need to have a couple numbers. It needs to have a quantifiable number that you can measure against, mm -hmm. and it needs to have a date. If, if you don't have a goal like that, if you're like, if it's just like, oh, I just want to make money, then it's like, you never know how successful you are. I just, I want to get my social media numbers up. All right. What does that look like? Right. You got 400 followers now. 
Is that 500? Boom, you good. You, up. You, you did it. Mm-hmm. That's not satisfactory, though. But here's the thing. If you spent $20 and you got 100 new followers, good money spent, right? $20 ad, 100 new followers, $5 ad. Okay. 100 new followers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see how the difference was? Yeah. yeah. See, that budget changed. What mm-hmm. made sense changed based on the outcome. Right. Mm-hmm. So now if yeah. you sit up and spend $2,000 with somebody because they promising you, like, are oh, you just trying to get your social media following up? $2,000. We can do this, that, and the other. And now you got 100 new followers. Now, that sounds like a terrible uh, investment. Oh, no, but, but here's the thing. Did you not get more followers? You got you more followers. said more. Exactly. I more. specific. I and, said more. And that's the necessity of us being honest and being specific. And and it's like just that, that lack of being specific is what hurts most artists. I think I'm going to stick with the same stance on that one. I think that when you first come in, you are an artist, it is art, and you don't really know where your talent is going to take you, but you do hope that it takes you somewhere. And this is music is one of them things where it's okay for you to learn on the job. It's not necessarily that you have to come in like that. It would be nice to have people like that around you. That's why you should have a team, and you build your team as you go. I don't know any, probably 1% of successful artists. I actually just did a song with Dondria. So when I was doing my song, y'all remember Dondria, right? Yeah. Okay, so when I was doing my song with Dondria, her team is very intimate and very, uh, everybody has a job, everybody has a face. So when I, the reason I wanted to go with her, because I was going to go with uh, Tiffany Evans at first, but it seems like that Dondria had a better um, circle around her. She had a better team. So I knew that when I did the song with her, I was pretty much inheriting her team in conjunction with my team. So the... She's been in, she was the first African American woman to get signed from YouTube. So we're talking back in 2005, 2006. It's 2023. And she's still structuring her team the exact same way, but it did not happen overnight. So when So So Deaf was no longer a label, she had to figure out how to reconfigure her entire team again because this was something that was never seen before. She came in signed and now she's independent. So that's why I say that you can't quantify all of this stuff because the game changes so much. She went from singing covers on YouTube to having a record deal with Jermaine Dupri to having the biggest single in the world to being independent again to merging into acting and being in the um, Aretha Franklin movie, which was unheard of for somebody for like her to do. So, no, you can't quantify none of this stuff. All that sounds like Web3 and NFTs and crypto to me. It's like a bunch of gobbledygook to obfuscate the truth. <laughs> like you can give me all these fancy words and terms and all this stuff. Here's the thing. Everybody, if you're doing art, you can do art. And it could be a hobby. And I'm fine with that. I love that. I tell people all the time. This dude, man. Quit spending money on this. Like, I, you can catch me on a lot. Like, why are you doing that? That don't even make no sense. You're spending too much money. It's like... It's a hobby for most people. The problem is most people don't know it's a hobby for them. It's a lot of hobbyists running around here Hobby, thinking that they... Hobbyists. 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 Yeah. hobbyists. If you ain't making no money and you have no prospects of making no money and you have no plans on making no money, I don't care if you got a, a membership to LA Fitness and you go play basketball every... You, you don't introduce yourself and someone asks you what you do. I play ball. Like, no, you work at UPS. Right. You hoop on the weekends. So wherever a person check come from, that's what they do. Um, that's their primary profession? Yes. That is their primary profession. And it's like, now, here's the thing. You can also do other things like, I own a magazine. Mm-hmm. But I also am a promoter because I do events. and We make money off events. Mm-hmm. I also do consulting work. So I'm a consultant. Like I do other things. And all of these things, I, I do at a certain level where I get paid to do them. There are other things that I do. Like, I play video games. I wouldn't call myself a gamer. You follow me? I don't get paid to stream and do an endorsement. I wouldn't call myself a streamer. Like, so if I do a thing and I do it because I love doing it, because I enjoy doing it and it brings me joy, but it's not necessarily something that brings money in, that doesn't, that's not a hyphen for me. That's not something I'm going to claim and say and introduce and tell people okay. that I do. And so, like, that's that space where, as a culture, We've conditioned artists to not feel comfortable 
making art unless it's tied to them making money. Well, let me interject right there. Okay. 90% of successful gamers right now that stream are people who have a lifetime lineage of loving video games mm -hmm. at a time where there was no such thing as Twitch or streaming or being able to download games on your game. So then when it came around, they already had the talent and they already had, most of them already had like game chairs and headsets and stuff because they were doing it for free. So then when Twitch came around and streaming and the money came around and YouTube came around, they were already set to do it, which circles back to what I was saying about the people who start in music with no actual tangible goal that they want to reach. It's the exact same thing. But you don't, you're not chastising the people who were doing, playing the game for free, but you're chastising the people who were doing music for free. No. It's a contradiction to me. That's no. what it sounds like. I think you misinterpret it. Okay, let me hear it. Like, I tell people that they're hobbyists. You take that, look, look, at, it, look at his face. Zoom in on them. Zoom in on them. They hate hearing that. They hate hearing that. <laughs> like, that's, that, that's like, that, like, that's nerve-wracking for an artist to be it, told it just, today. It sounds like some Harry Potter Here's the thing. Because like. the, culture, the culture has conditioned you to have a negative connotation with that word in your music. No, I don't mind. We don't do that with painters. We don't do that with sculptors. Mm -hmm. There are other artisans who create because they love it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You still paint, dog? You ain't got nothing in the Louvre yet. Like, we don't sit up and do that with painters. But if you sitting up making songs, posting them up, are uh, you still doing your little rap thing? You ain't, man, why, why ain't you on Revolt yet? Why ain't you? That's how we are in our culture. Yeah. That's, that's a cultural that's issue. So even me, I'm being very honest and calling a spade a spade. If you're doing music because you love doing music, mm -hmm. not because it's making you money and you don't have an actual plan on making money, everybody, even a painter, hopes one day their art will be appreciated, but that ain't why they go buy supplies from Michaels. Right. You follow me? And so with that being said, they're not going and opening up a $20,000 line of credit at Michaels and thinking like, man, if I get them acrylics, then my paint's really going to pop. Like, no, nah, they ain't doing that. <laughs> but in this music industry, mm -hmm. because of the culture, people are spending exorbitant amounts of cash thinking that it's going to change the yeah. likelihood of their success and they don't even have a basic fundamental plan. Hmm. Okay. No, that's I guess true. I see where you're coming that's from as far as that goes. That's I'm definitely just saying. true. Yeah. It's oh. a lot of different aspects to look at that in, but I hear what you're saying. Especially though. to the average artist, which is who we're talking to. Okay. Yeah. I gotta and I gotta keep remembering to dial that back. They were talking to the, yes. the average artist. Okay. The average artist. I understand. Mm -hmm. Which is ninety percent of them. Right. Yes, and that's a good number. Ninety percent of them are hobbyists. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with that? What's no, wrong with that? Isn't that wrong? But it's just funny to hear. Yeah. It's just funny to hear. How many artists? How many artists do you know that make music that are very talented? A lot. Right. A lot of them. And I want you to ask, and and all of the ones that you, I want you to think about some of the ones that may be your favorite. And these are, and they, we ain't even gonna restrict this to artists, producers, mm. songwriters, good yeah, good ones, DJs, yeah. Like, it's, it's plenty of them that are amazingly talented that don't have a budget. And the reason they don't have a budget is because they've never seriously thought about what their goal is. You because feel like that's the only reason? Yeah, you, know, you have to do that before you can get a budget. Yeah. Like, this, 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 what, I, what I laid out, this framework, is a naturally evolving framework. If you're doing any bit, just like how... Like, I'm going to do this show. Then it's like, okay, what am I going to do? Oh, if I do that, then I got to have this. And it's just a naturally occurring thing from someone. When you take something seriously, when you decide, like, yo, I'm going to get this car, I'm going to get this house, or I'm going to anything. You're gonna spend. You, you, no, you yeah. To no but if you don't, if you never, you never fully um, deliberate on what what it is that you're doing like what is my actual goal here mm -hmm. and that's the thing where i like i said i'm, I'm here to kill dreams because chasing dreams is the problem why are you here to kill dreams what what's good about dreams what's bad about dreams i mean what's good about them what's bad about them um dreams aren't real you don't think so no we got a whole label called dream chasers right <laughs> That is such a name. Three artists on the label. Well, if I dang, I got to talk about Lil Snoop. Then rest in peace to Lil Snoop. Uh -huh. He was definitely on his way. Um, he had just did his Cosmic Care freestyle. That's why I said three. Away. I know. Right. Yeah, right, go ahead. <laughs> I messed with Lil Snoop, but it's it's hard to say because 
he's been in, he's been incarcerated a lot of times, but I want to say that Lil Snoop was his star artist. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, mm -hmm. two more. And I mean, I'm 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 uh I'm dropping my flag there. Right. I'm so the one there. that you know is the one who died. Yeah. He, well, I'm gonna just say passed away. Yes, he passed away. I just speak in blunt truths. Like no, it's, it. it's like not he's, saying nothing he's wrong. not here no, just to release verbiage. new music. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not here to release deceased. new music. And 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 that's the that's the thing. That's what happened. Yeah. But so he just was, he was definitely on his way. Like having 100%. dreams, dreams like because dreams can get mistaken for those, and that's what makes them so dangerous. Like you have a With dream. Those, what, a dreams can get mistaken goals. for goals. Goals. They're so not you, one and the same. No. I don't know. I may have to disagree with you on this. To be honest with you. All right. Give me a, give me what's your dream? Shit, I got so many of them. Give me one. Well, one of my dreams was to be on TV. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That was a dream. Mm -hmm. So you've accomplished that, right? A mm -hmm. couple times. Right. So if someone's dream is to be on TV, mm -hmm. how do they know if they're being successful? Mm, probably when they start taking the steps to move in that direction. What are those steps? Like literally the steps to get yeah, like, I, and and reason why I'm asking this is because like if when it's a dream it's vague it's like I just want to be on TV one day so I could literally say that and that could be one of my dreams right now right and I do nothing like like yo just wanting it loving it desiring it watching TV studying actors watching YouTube videos all of that stuff I could feel like is preparing me for that it is too. It absolutely is. But how is it moving me toward it? Okay, so now we're talking about two different aspects of the way that you go about that dream. Making plans. You pretty much more so given an overall mm -hmm. synopsis of the dream being a dream, but mm -hmm. there's different aspects to it. There's the dream. There's the action to achieve the dream. There's the networking for the dream. There's different aspects than the ones that you mentioned. It. Oh, you, you, bro, you got to quit bringing these Web3 <laughs> NFT. <laughs> See, he from Detroit. I'm he come from, with all that I'm, slick talk. I'm from Listen, Flint. <laughs> all right, my bad, my yeah. bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, so I'm gonna put it like this: You might want to do your homework a little bit more when it comes to me, just so you understand exactly who it is that you' sitting by. Humbly speaking, at this point, you can roll my credits. <laughs> and here's, the, here's the thing. Listen, and this is this this a. Man, bro, you could be the most accomplished person. Mm -hmm. And there's no not. I've I've sat down with multi-platinum producers, artists. It's like managers that don't even get this, that don't get the business. And like that's where one of the fallacies where you have so many people watching these interviews and these people telling them what to do on an independent level that have never done it. But what, but what did you just call them, though? You just called them multi-platinum producers. So that means that there's some aspect of the industry that they do get, and then there's other aspects of the industry that you may have mastered a little bit more than they have that they could possibly pick up on top of the success that they've already gathered. So, yes, they do get it. Right. They just don't understand your job, and that's why it's your job and not their job. No, no, no. They did that. their job. They got their Grammys already. So now they hire you to do your job. No, I'm not saying that. Their job. No, but that's, that's what I'm saying. No, no, but that's the that's the fallacy, though. See, people people like a blue check. Mm -hmm. People conflate verification in one area with a general verification, like in knowledge and different things. So you have people who have a blue check who are talking about COVID and giving out advice. Mm -hmm. They're not a virologist. But because there's someone of repute, there's someone who are, is well known, mm -hmm. is like the general public takes it. Well, such and such said this, mm -hmm. and and it, because it's like the halo effect. Mm -hmm. It's like so if 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 you have notoriety or you excel in this one area, we generally think that all of these other things, like the stuff that's happening with Elon Musk right now, right. it was like oh he's done this, and then it's like yo thank he's you for my blue check, up. Elon. Thank you. <laughs> So you have all of these things that go on. And so it's it, 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 in a similar fashion where people who've been successful in the music industry, um, because they've been successful in the music industry, and then they give out advice to independent artists and creators and people who are aspiring, but that advice is without context because they did it 
at a different point in time in the music industry. They did it with a different set of resources in the industry. They all of these different things, and they'll they and they they give out this um, fortune cookie advice mm-hmm. that leads a lot On of mark card advice. Yeah, that yeah. leads a lot of creatives into a very negative space mentally because they they try these things and they do these things and it, don't work. and it doesn't work and they don't see the results but here's the thing they 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 budgeted f- they didn't budget for the money and they didn't spend the money but they spent the time <laughs> so now you can't get ba- that back yeah it's You're over not getting that back so you like five years in yeah. well it just keeps saying if i just keep putting it out and it's like no nah, it don't it. happen like that i don't give nobody that advice ever that's what you're doing. Me? Yes. No, it's not. That's what you're doing. No, the hell you're doing not. that right now. No, I'm saying, I'm not doing hey, that. we need a budget. You don't need a budget. You just need a hope, dream, and peace. <laughs> I didn't say any of that for the record. Y'all all have a rewind button. Do not get fooled by that trickery. I did Sorry. not say that. As long as you you passionate. He said money is infinite. Infinite. I ain't got to ain't, 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 ain't no, ain't no, no end. Limit. Ain't no limit. Okay. There's no limit. <laughs> Y'all leave a hey, comment and let hey, me know if y'all want me to add the same more thing. To what, what Romeo said. said. <laughs> what did Romeo say? What did Romeo say? Oh my god, that whole argument. Is, well, I missed it. Yo. I missed it. Yeah. yeah, I missed it. So that's the, but that's the that's the whole thing is with, with establishing a budget. You gotta first establish a goal, and it's like taking that dream and putting a quantifiable measure on it. I want to be on three TV shows. I want to have three appearances. I want at least two speaking roles, whatever it is, something quantifiable that you can measure against and a date, a time. Mm -hmm. You got to set a temporal context. So if the goal is to do that within 18 months and you know that you didn't didn't secure a a situation within four months of moving down here, then you're like, yo, I'm, I'm on good pace. But if you... 12 months in and ain't got no callbacks in, you got to readjust and it's, it's it, at least at the very least put some pressure on you to be more proactive about the effort that you're putting in and being more mindful of the results that you're getting from the places where you're putting effort in. But when you don't have a clearly defined goal, now you don't know how to budget your time in accordance to that goal, you don't know how to budget your resources in accordance to that goal. So that's that's why I like when I talk to someone and they haven't set a budget, then I know that they they really haven't defined a goal that they're trying to reach. And it's they're dreamers. Dreamer. And I don't like I'm not I'm not here to sell people dreams. What is the actual goal that'd be feasible for somebody to tell you? Um, make a thousand dollars off of music. Okay. Like it's very simple. Like, hey, mm-hmm. it ain't gotta be nothing crazy. It'd be like, yo, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get my first check off a of tune core this year, or I wanna sell a lot of ten t shirts. Like, I wanna. It it can be very simple, and then now you can put concerted effort toward achieving that goal. So now, when someone says, if your goal is to sell um, twenty hoodies at fifty dollars off of your Shopify, and someone's like, yo, I can get you a verse from Gucci for Five hundred dollars, like even though it's a crazy that's price, a crazy how does that go toward my goal? Right, for the hoodies. Yeah, exactly. Don't and so that's it. where that's why artists rarely reach their goal is because mm. is if your goal is fifty steps north, mm-hmm. but you go ten steps north, twenty steps south, mm-hmm. four steps east, mm-hmm. seven west, like you just you're making a lot of movement. If all that movement was in the same direction, though, Oof. you would have hit your goal. Okay, well, let me say this. That's a nugget, I want to give a shout-out to my guy, Ro Timmy. Those who know him as Dre from Power. Dre was signed to T.I. a long time ago. Dre was signed to 50 Cent right before the show started. Dre was doing music. Or Ro Timmy. When I'm saying Dre, I'm saying Ro Timmy. Same person. And his music was not taken off the way that he wanted to take off. He got the role on Power. He became the most hated villain in the world from the show Power. And then that's when he dropped Ridden. And then that's when he dropped In My Bed. So the Wale feature does not exist or nobody would want to collaborate with him if he did not shift and go into the acting space and become one of the biggest actors in the world. So you do not have to push all of your 
uh, goals in the same direction for you to be able to um, capitalize on them in different areas. Um, there was probably no budget set for him to do that either. And then his fame, he was able to leverage his new fame. He was able to leverage it. And then that became his bargaining tool moving forward. So that's why I'm not a hundred percent in agreement with what you're saying, because I'm also a person who did the exact same thing. Okay. Hold on, real, real quick before that, I want you to pan over here. <laughs> Fairy dust. <It's>, Go ahead. <laughs> What you said may be valid for his story. However, just, again, speaking to the average person now, <laughs> you know. That's what, the problem. What They can't do what Rotimi did, you know. And even he had a name for himself when, you, like you said, he was signed to T.I. first, then mm. he was signed to 50 Cent, then he got his role. All that sounds like money's involved. Exactly. <laughs> like had, Where were they shooting power? had to have a budget. So How much was the rental that he was in? Like, what was his per diem? All, All of these things. And the he average probably person, didn't have nothing to do with that. That was 50 show. But still. Yeah, if it's money being spent you on talking you, about that's 50's your money. Budget. No, I'm talking about Ro Timmy, though. Ro Timmy. Right? I'm not talking about 50. I'm even talking that, about Ro even Timmy. Even that, he had a name for himself. It's not like he was the Joe Blow off the street who just decided I wanted to do music and I, or I wanted to act, and now I'm picked up by 50 Cent, and mm. woo, we're getting paid five figures over here, you know, just to play a role. That's not for the I'll average person. I'll have to go person. back and do my homework on that one. You know Hakeem from Empire? That was his first ever acting role right he but here's a, he here's, a, here's the problem in the industry before that here's my problem what's with problem? you what's the and problem? all artists like you what's the problem you pick outliers and use them as the average it's hard because i became an the, outlier no. so that's hard that's no. a hard one and then with me coming from that average background that i came from i understand how easy it is for you to become an outlier when you really put the work easy? toward doing but it. but that's the that's the that's the that's that does not make mathematical sense. <laughs> you not. can't you can't be an outlier and mm -hmm. it be easy, like because then if it's Why easy, not? then that becomes the average. Well, then easy is subjective for the person that's saying it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was easy for me. I mean, it's easy for the person who won the lottery. There you go. But that makes they're still an outlier. Yeah. Yeah. It's still easy too. So, but here's the thing. It's easy being an outlier. It's not easy becoming, becoming an, outlier. an outlier. Okay, I can. Okay, I can rock with that right there. Yeah. I can rock with that distinction, yeah. and, and I still feel the same way. But I get what you're saying, though. And but that's where, like, I'm very specific about these words because the way that you put it out there and the way that people put it I'm out there, interpret it. people are like, oh yeah, this like, it's just I can do it too. Yeah, they can. Possible with, with the information. <laughs> with, okay. Go to my Instagram, y'all, Vigilante L O M, and shoot me a DM. See, this whole thing was to get his followers up. Right? You can't be coming up in here using our. <laughs> Why not? And I'm not going to say they can't. It's just like the way that you work is not the way that the average person works. You put a lot of work, you've done a lot of groundwork and footwork. Like, you're not the average person. You don't make average connections. You don't have average conversations. He is the average person. But I'm saying, nah. No, no, here's the thing. He's an average. I'm an average person. You're an average person. We're all the average, average right? Here's the thing. And this is this is one of the things why, like I said, I'm very concerned about mental health is this. Mm. We're all lucky. Mm. Like, like, like you, like. There is the birth lottery. You're lucky to be born to who you was born to, who supported you, or whatever hardships okay, that you that. had that motivated you. Okay. You were lucky to meet this person when you were here. You know how many people who were more talented, more intelligent than yeah. I, that like just should have been in the room? Mm. Yeah. And so we take for granted yeah. the immense amount of luck that comes to create these opportunities. And then we sit up and we with this winner bias. We act like, well, I just did this, and this is all you had to do. That's why I try to address the math, mm. because the math is universal outside of luck. Like, three times three is always nine, no matter how lucky you are. And so it's like, let's look at the math and the things that we control can control. And it's like, it's a difference between success and stardom. I believe every single artist and creative can be successful. All of them can see success. Not mm -hmm. all of them will see stardom. My boy making sense now. I went, man, you know what? He finally saying something that actually makes sense. I like this dude now, man. He making sense now. I said a culmination of everything else Every I've said. <laughs> <laughs> see, I just he had made, to I listen. He made it make sense. You got to spoon feed him. You got to spoon feed him. You got to walk him through it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, 
Definitely. Shout out to that. That was that was a good one. You're right, because there is a difference between a working actor and a star. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to become a star. Thank you. Yeah. For telling them that. And that's and that's that's what this is all about. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like, but you you can't become a star without being successful. Yeah. But you can't become successful without being a star. And like people mix up those things and so everything that they do is about being a star Star. so they because that's the that's their actual goal i'm gonna sell a million records i'm gonna do this crazy big thing then they start gambling exorbitant amounts of money Mm -hmm. their budget becomes outpaced for the goal with no regard to the probability of success for that goal so if you if you said it like yo i'm gonna sell a million um, CDs or records or albums next year, this is the thing that I want to do, then you have 12 months to do that, then you start scrambling and doing anything. you grasping at straws because you really don't know how there's, there, there isn't a clear path to make that happen. But if you say, hey, I want to generate an extra $10,000 off my music next year, there are plenty of ways that you could possibly do that from in a in a in a very tangible and approachable manner, you know how you can run ads. You know how you can um, do shows. You know how many like, and this is the simple things I'll be breaking down for like artists. Ten thousand dollars. Do fe- uh, do twenty features at five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, like yeah. Why are you trying to charge fifteen hundred? Nobody knows you like that. Right. And then they're breaking down like simple things like it's so many ways like. Taking artists from charging less than a hundred dollars for a feature to get twenty five hundred plus, because we put together a plan. Do this. This this helps with that. Do that. This helps with that. Mm. And now they're making money, and they're like they're instead of them instead of their music living off of them, they're living off their music. Mm. Okay, so let me ask you this. I want you to break it down. You got a new artist that come to you. They brand new. They've been doing art and music for like three months. Mm-hmm. They got a dope project. They got a single. Matter of fact, they got two singles that they would like to pick out. And they come in with a demo, but they want it to be an album or a mixtape. But all of them are really demos mm-hmm. until you get a major label deal. So then they come to you and they say, hey, can you break all of this down for me? What do I need to do from step one to step whatever to become successful? What is your one-on-one plan for them? First thing I'd be like, who let you in here? <laughs> <laughs> How did you, Kim? Did you let this person in? <laughs> I, I just, I don't, I, I, I love artists, but on a, on an individual basis, like the only way that I would ever find myself in this situation is from a serious cosign from someone else, or they're a member on our site, and I've been watching them do stuff. And I already have an idea. I'm, a, I'm going to approach them because I'm like, yo, you got this going on, this going on. Hey, change this up and do this. This is going to help you get on radio. Or, hey, do you have a one sheet? All right, we're going to get you a photo shoot done because we need this. We're going to send it out and get you some more media placements. It's like I take an active role in a lot of independent artists' lives. Like um, someone was just telling me like last night, like, oh, you you be a great manager. You should manage. Da, 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 da. I was like, that's what I lightweight do. Like, I co-manage every member that's on our site. So if I see something that you need or I see something that makes sense, I'm going to reach out. I might reach out to your manager. Like, yo, we got something going on. I'm here to help people get to a bag. That's a lot of extra streams of income. How many people you got on the site that you co-manage? Uh, I don't get a percentage off of them. Oh, you don't? No, it's just it's a part of my service. Like, this is, like this is what, like, we, like, I started my company to actually help people. Mm-hmm. Like, so I'm what a lot of people pretend to be online. Right, to actually help people. I see. Yeah. So I, like, I, so I speak a little rougher. Like, I'm like, yeah. oh, you're a hobbyist. Like, and, like, I want you to deal with that because I, I, I shouldn't have to. What's, right. the, <laughs> what's, the, what's the average response to that when you tell that to an artist who's actually a hobbyist? They oh, they get, they'd be mad. They'd be like, like, because they, everyone wants to think that they're not. And it's like that's, and it's like cool, like, like, Lying but, to but here's the thing: <laughs> if you're not to you, that's fine. But that's what you are to me. If an artist make two cent off of his streams on TuneCore, are they considered an artist now since they made some money? They're in the industry, right? 
They're in the industry. They're in the industry. Yeah, the they, industry. they 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 okay. they've positioned themselves to start generating yeah. revenue. Okay. Okay. Now, how successful, are you successful they are? Right? I was yeah. Say, are you successful now, now in the if here's the thing, if they spent no money to generate that two cent, wildly successful. <laughs> now, there are people who've spent, who've made thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Like I had someone, this was like a couple months ago, like talking about the money. Oh, I made X amount of dollars. Da, 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 da. I'm like, how much you spend though? Right. Oh, I got quiet. Like, so you can't brag about your 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 thirty thousand dollars that you made if you spent two hundred thousand to make it. Okay. What that net income look like? Yeah, I can feel that. So it's like I'm math. Like you can listen. You can't fool me with the Web three. Right. <laughs> I need to see the math. <laughs> so that's what like for me like um, it's like ultimately that's where like for I I I find more joy in the fact that like I'm not. I'm not chasing outlier stardom success. Like, oh, like someone asked last night on live, who are the biggest artists you work for? And I was like, yo, that doesn't matter. Because you're not in their situation. Right. Like, so the, you trying to come over here to hoping to get that ain't about to happen. You ain't got the money, you ain't got the connections, you ain't got the resources. None of that stuff is equivalent. Mm. But here's the thing. Here's a page of people that we've gotten booked on major shows. Here, here's a whole slew of people that have received cash apps from us for sponsorships, for partnerships, for travel, for stuff. Here are a lot of people who are paying their bills now, who Real quit their jobs yeah. because of what we've done for them. And so people be chasing stardom mm -hmm. and missing out on success. Mm -hmm. And that's a function of mm -hmm. setting your goals and then from there, you can come up with your budget. I think I agree with everything you just said, except for the part about not chasing the outliers. I think that that's extremely counterproductive for you not to do that and not to set other people up to do that, too. Not chasing the outliers? Yeah, because those are the people that serve as the examples of the exact format that you should be following. No, they're, they're never. Yeah, they are. Those are the lucky people. You can't recreate luck. Yes, you can. Otherwise, it would only no, be, you, there, there would only be one lucky person. Ever. So if you win the lottery... I want you to win it twice. No, but there's, a, there's another person. <laughs> you've won gonna, it. You've seen it. Another person going to win it somewhere No, else. no, no. But you know you got to recreate it. See, you've won the lottery. You do recreate it. So now it. I it's want you to lottery. now go buy another ticket. It's not the same person. It's the but same But that's lottery. the point. That, no, it's luck. It's the same luck, music industry. You have no control over luck. Yeah. Okay. That's where stardom comes but from. But you do have control over your, your stardom to become an outlier. You do have control over that. Will Smith didn't become the biggest actor in the world by accident. That was his he work worked. that he put no, in. No, yeah, listen, listen. Yes, he did. So you tell every other actor oh, not to shoot God. for that. It's um, my son read this book. Who was the guy who was like the first? He just got elected first black mayor. I want to say Baltimore, the more the yeah, he was West 18. West yeah. Brown West was it West I Brown? I forgot his name, but I know you're talking about though. All right, so my son read the book um, a couple years ago. The wrong West Brown or Westmoreland. Two kids, same exact name, grew up like blocks away from each other and how their lives went in completely different directions. It's like there so much of your life is beyond your control. Just the accident that was in front of us that made us late getting here, a flight delay, anything. It's all of these things that lead you to being in a room with someone who could change your life, leads you into these conversations, leads you to an epiphany, and you have no control over all of that. That's where stardom comes from. And so... I will never espouse chasing stardom because you don't have control over it. Chase success, and if you're lucky, stardom will happen. But if it doesn't, you're still successful. No, I hear where you're coming from. I don't agree with you, but I hear where you're coming from, though, for sure. Right. Absolutely. We didn't bring you here to agree. For sure, and that's why I'm not. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to let you all know that you can take the stairs, you can take the elevator. You still, you're still going up. Right. That's how I go. That's how the industry actually goes. And so, yes, the question of where does the money go and the budget. I don't know. Did we ever answer that? I mean. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a part two. <laughs> right. After he does his homework on who I am, they didn't make more sense when I come back. Well, guys, you know what it is. <laughs> Let me wink at the crowd. It's been a <laughs> <laughs> it mean more to him when I do it. 
Oh my God. Well, here we have it. Um, another successful podcast. We probably are going to have part two because we really did not answer the full question of the topic of today. But we still got some great stuff in there. And I hope y'all learned something today about budgeting. If not, come on back. Come on back. Yo, this podcast was a great example. If you don't have a budget, everything will go off the rails. Off the rails. Okay. <laughs> Completely. Derail. <laughs> All right. All right. We out. This is Kelby Cannon, publisher of Making the Magazine, founder of the membership. Catch y'all next week. It's Primrose. Out.